Welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques and today we're going to talk about how to put in a sweetheart neckline into a straight edged bodice gown. Now this video, I know it's a little long, but there are so many different ways to do this that I wanted to divide this up into three different segments. The first segment is going to show you how to make your own templates to make all different shapes of sweetheart necklines. The second one, I'm going to let you watch me work and I chose a gown um, that had a lot of boning in it so you can see the process with that. And then the third one is just going to be a slideshow of just, you know, your garden variety sweetheart job. I hope this helps. Section one, no, no, these are not birds. These are templates for sweetheart necklines. I'm gonna teach you how to make those. Okay, so I'm going to uh, teach you how to make your own template for um, different size sweetheart necklines. Um, but basically, you just take a piece of cardstock and you fold it in half, tall ways. And um, this is gonna be your center seam. Okay, this is actually one of my sewing rollers. Um, I couldn't find a craft roller. So um, kids, don't try this at home. I I'm gonna, when I'm done, I'm gonna have to um, wash the edge off here um, because, see that, graphite. Okay, so um, I'm gonna have to wash the edge off. So always make sure you do that if you use your roller with a pencil or a pen or something and you're not just like kind of marking beside it, but if you're dragging along it, you need to keep your roller clean to keep the gowns clean. So anyways, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a sweetheart neckline that's only, say, an inch deep. And then I'm going to do another one that's like an inch and a half deep. All right? Um, and then I'm going to skip down and do one that is, um, let's say, should we do two inches deep? Yeah, let's do that, okay? So we've got an inch, an inch and a half, and two inches. And um, then we're going to have to pick our width. Um, now, every one of these templates is not going to work for every dress. Um, the, the sizes of the dress varies, so where those uh, princess seams are, like the, the two front seams that run down the, the front of the bust, um, that's going to be different widths for different sizes. And so if you have a larger dress, the, the two inch sweetheart let's say it had a total six inch span, it really wouldn't necessarily um, look as deep or dramatic on a plus size dress, say like a 22 or something, compared to, you know, if you had a, a very small girl that was in like a size four dress and you just did the one inch dip, it, the drama effect might be about equivalent for those dresses. So everything's going to be in perspective, um, in proportion, and you're going to basically want to um, hold these up in front of the dress if she can't decide. You can also print this out. I highly recommend doing this. Um, I often have to show my brides who cannot visualize. I have to show them the look of the sweetheart um, matching their skin tone. So what you can do is get like scrapbook papers, um, pa you know, the, the actual page of the papers that you buy. It's like a dollar or something for a 12 by 12 or something like that. So get it in varying shades of skin tone colors um, and then print, print this out. And then you can kind of hold them up as a template for her on the dress. Um, so anyways, let's do a, let's just make this one an itty bitty with like a four inch span, okay? Let's go like that. So let's do a five inch span. So I'm gonna go to like two and a half is the middle, right? Okay, and then let's do like a six inch span. All right, so um, now we've got this and we're going to just sketch like this and pick a nice pretty shape. Some of them are gonna have more of an arc, some of them are less. Um, but I'm just gonna go, go ahead and kind of sketch out. These kind of seem like they look natural. 
Okay, so sketch this. More of the that Disney sweetheart. You're gonna upswing and then drop down a little faster. Can you see how changing that ankle is really gonna change the drama of that sweetheart? So I'm just kind of picking, you know, how I want this to end up looking, the style of it all. Um, so then what you do is you fold it like this and you cut it. You're gonna do like you're making a snowflake or something. You're gonna cut it like this and then when you unfold it, it's going to be uh, symmetrical. It's gonna be like a mirror image and it's gonna have that center fold. That way you can align this with the center front of the gown. But I wanted to show you how to make it because your bride may not want just one, 1 1.5, two. Um, the spans may differ. So um, a lot of times, if a bride is very visionary, you say, um, okay, how, how deep do you want this to go? And they can just point right to it. I, I want it right here on their dress, you know? And so I just put a pin there and then I ask them if they're wanting like the arc kind of look to theirs or do they want it nice and open? Like how do they want it? Um, and from there I can kind of pin the shape on draw a line with my pens on um, and if she's super visionary she can go by that and I can make a template based on um, the direction that she has given me so I want you to understand how to make these because you're not just going to end up with these three sweetheart templates you're gonna end up over the years with a, a generous little pile of them as you can see this one's a little wider and deeper and this is just barely there and then this one is deeper, but it doesn't have long, uh, have a very long span. So they all have different little personalities. And for our next segment, I'm going to let you watch me uh, make a custom template for a dress according to the bride's direction. And uh, you'll get to see me shorten the boning. I specifically picked a dress with a lot of boning, so you could see that. And you can see me cut and sew the sweetheart. Um, throughout this video, you're going to see three or four different dresses represented just to help you see the breadth of styles. Uh, so this is the inside of the dress. I've turned the dress wrong side out to get to the, the inner structure of it. This is the lining, this is the boning, the canvas, and then beyond that is the outer shell. Um, this bride wants a sweetheart neckline. These two are at the top of her princess seam, so these are the highest peaks of the dress. She wants her sweetheart to be about two and a half inches deep. So, um, I'm sorry, two and a quarter. So, I'm going to take this piece of cardstock and I'm going to make a little template. So, if she wants two and a quarter, it's the finished size. I'm going to need a little bit of a seam allowance. I'm going to mark just a little beyond a little bit further than a quarter of an inch okay so going from the top to here that's where I'm gonna cut I can mark on here I'm gonna have to cut that boning and get that boning out of here that's where that's gonna be so we're gonna have to have our template go from here to um, looking on the outside of the dress it was just on the inside of the princess seam she wanted this nice pretty little arc to be going on here. So, kind of like this. Start to sketch real light on it. This boning's gonna get shortened. And this is the canvas, nobody's gonna see that. All right, so. Here. We need to figure up from here to about right inside that princess seam. All right, so we've got our center. We're gonna do it. This is where we wanna end up. So we're gonna bump in a little bit on that too. Okay, so 
this is going to be our arc. It, you really don't cut out very much fabric at all to end up getting a sweetheart. You'd be surprised. A two and a half inch or two and a quarter inch cut is pretty significant, but that's all we're gonna cut out. It's, it's really not gonna look significant to us um, when we're cutting. So this is cardstock, a little bit harder to see through. I'm shining up near my light and I can see my pencil, see my pencil line. So here we go. like that. I'm going to cut this out and use this template. So this is cut out. Of course I use craft scissors, not, not my sewing scissors, as you all know. And you can do it whichever way you prefer. You can use your template this way or this way. I prefer this way because it's a little bit smaller. Okay, so you just place it. Make sure your lines are all good. And remember this has your seam allowance built in. You could do it the other way where it's like your finished look that you want and you're gonna cut to the outside of that, but whatever, I think it's a little safer. And sometimes your top piece here is curved one way or the other. It might have a little scoop in it. I just make sure I line up the top of the template with the way that makes sense to me for that particular dress. And I do it the same on the other side. That's the most important thing. All right, so we gotta shorten this bone. So we marked to include the seam allowance. Now the boning is going to be the opposite. We're going to have to bump down. This is where the seam is going to be. Then you got to give the dress some room to breathe. So you're going to really come down from that. Try to maintain the angle. I'm cutting up a little higher on the blade of my knife, of my scissors. I'm cutting up here. I don't want to mess up my tip here. There's that. This is a super thick dress. So let me show you. You know, I have these little muslin stoppers here. You can sew those down. But I have another little trick I like to do. These these stays are, you know, they're like individual sticks. I don't know if you're familiar with the way they work or not. Trying to get it to focus there. There you go. See there are individual little plastic sticks in there? 
and sometimes one will kind of break away and start working its way out and that's where it really starts to cut people um, and we don't want that so this is what I do make sure the fabric is very clear clear it away and I see it bubbling it's all fused together okay. and then I put that muslin stopper on there and that's gonna keep it from stabbing her keep it from going through the fabric right. I don't know if you can see it but each of those little sticks ooh, got me each of those little sticks start to melt and they'll fused together in a long bubble and that's going to keep one from breaking away from the others. It's just something I do. I've not really heard of anybody else do it before. Kind of, it's one of my weird little things, but it works for me, works for my brides. Gotta get this stabilized together. I got rid of my boning where I marked this, so I'm gonna mark fresh. This is a two and a quarter, okay? So this is two. Really make that clear. Right there is where we're cutting to. So we need to pinch here, pinch down. What we can't have is, say, this back fabric, like, buck up or something, and then we cut it, and then we look over on the back and we're horrified because, oh no, there's, we cut the back an inch deeper than the front. You can't have anything like that happen. That would be terrible. I've never done anything like that, thank goodness. Oh, thank, thank you, Jesus. Never had anything do like that, but... That's part of it. Is you've got to with sewing. You've got to always pay attention to what's going on on the back side. All right. Time to cut. We're ready. So, going from inside here got my little line feeling around back here I know there's no monkey business going on still gonna cut inside of of my line I'm cutting on the safe side of my line. That's just where my peace of mind is at. And to be even more accurate, I know we drew on it, but I love to mirror my fabric. It helps so much. This is the finished point. We have to snip down to that. No turning back. Okay. Now, I'm going to keep this in place. I'm going to write on here two and a quarter. And then I just punch a hole in it and I hang them up with my other ones. Because you will get a dress that comes along sometime that's this far apart and the bride wants two and a quarter. Alright, so now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to sew this. And work out 
just fine. So, starting just inside that princess scene. So along my pencil line. turn this right side out. I'll see you on the other side. Alright, so I flipped it right side out and I've got it pinned um, because now we don't have this seam here anymore. So this lining is just going to roll right out. So we're going to have to hand stitch that down on the inside as I have it pinned. And we're going to press the edge, making sure all these angles and arcs look just alike. I'm going to do a lot of this mirroring, making sure they line up and look good. Then we're going to look at it on the bride as well, make sure it looks right with her because our bodies are asymmetrical also. So we want to make sure all that looks good, but overall I think it looks like it's going to be pretty. Okay, so for the third and final segment, learning all about how to put in sweetheart necklines, um, I'm just going to give you a little slideshow of another dress that I did. This is a much smaller sweetheart, as you can see. I found my center. I've got the dress kind of pinned to stabilize it. There you can see the pins a little more detailed. I sketched around the template. On this one, I am stitching first and cutting second. Again, it doesn't really matter which order you do this in. And I'm using the left invisible zipper foot for this one. There's that little tiny piece that gets cut out. And you can see I made the notch for the center of the sweetheart. There's the notch, and then there's a couple other snips just to help the dress deal with the curve there. And then finally, you need to turn it right side out, and you need to kind of roll that lining in and put some tacks all along the edge. These are nice and bumpy, lots of shadows going on here, so you can see the detail um, of how I hand stitched that but you're gonna wanna hand stitch that down and then press it, and then of course it won't look that bumpy. Pressing it will cause it to smooth right out and keep it from rolling. I hope this has helped you. Please hit like, share, and subscribe. Hit the little bell if you wanna be notified every time I upload a new video.